Peace. This is a meat and potato sorcery production starring myself, the Water Alchemist. And today, your mentor wants to talk to you if you ever find yourself in this situation. I want to talk to you about homelessness. And I want to give you the keys of how to survive homelessness because I've done research and I know a very good practitioner of magic. Very good that ended up being homeless for four months. Let me give you the metaphysics of how to survive. When you go to a shelter, we know it's separated by gender. There's men's shelters and there's shelters for women and children. Now, what you would need to do magically, you would have to call on the protection of Michael. Michael is a champion an archangel and a defender of all those that call upon him. Because when you go up in the shelter, first and foremost, contrary to what people may think, many people who end up in shelters usually end up there because of mental health issues. Drugs really is the third. The second reason would be because when family can't get money out of you no more, they start making you uncomfortable until they basically just say you have to leave. So when you go there, you call upon Michael and then this is where you're going to have to be on your square and do your intelligence. Because when you're dealing with people who have mental health issues, nine out of 10, they've been in two or three shelters anywhere from 10 to 15 years. This is facts. Because. It takes an individual 20 years to get out of the vicious cycle of poverty. So call on Michael because that's what you're going to be dealing with. And the other thing is you're going to have to form an ally. Now, let me also get deeper with the metaphysics. Usually when you come up in there and you show your identification or whatever, what's going to end up happening is you will get placed on a housing list usually within three weeks to a month. Now, you will get something called a voucher. A voucher basically from Section 8, that comes from the state that you're in. And they will usually have it where they will set aside so much money when you get the voucher. Now, you have like two months to find housing. And it has to be up to code and inspection. And here's where I want to point out some don'ts. When you go up there and they ask you, have you ever been homeless or whatever, or where were you living at? This is what hurts a lot of people, especially those I've talked to. Don't say you were, you know, resting on somebody's couch because that can still consider you housed. Even if you say you've been living in your car, they consider that being housed. Basically, what will help accelerate the process is when you basically have been on the concrete or sleeping at parks. Don't say you've been to the friend's house off and on again or you've been in your car. I know that doesn't make any sense. Like, how could you be housed and you're living in your car? But they do. And you will find some so-called good witches of the West. And the black witch, you will find that in counselors because a lot of people, it's all about doing just the basic requirements to keep getting state funding. So even when you get the voucher, really what they try to do is push you at rooming houses. For those that don't know, rooming houses can have people like they can have like four or five rooms. You're rooming, you're renting a room from them. But you don't have no curfew, but you can't have people spend the night there either. So basically, that's just an advanced level of being a shelter. But when they write on the books, they'll just say that you're housed. So try to get you an apartment. And if you do have a felony, as long as it's not a violent felony, you should be able to get one. It's going to be a little harder if you have credit issues. So call on Michael for protection. Try and keep your mental Keep positive. You can work with the gold aspect of Santa Morte. If you're in a shelter and you're near a church, 
You could just buy some cigarettes or tobacco, leave that as an offering, do some prayers to her. You also can use cherry heads as an offering. You also can put just a can of Coke. Coke is an offering. Now, to further accelerate the process, you can also call on demons. You can call on them to help you. Lucifer is great to help you. Lilith is great to keep up your strength and your morale. So these are some keys of surviving it if unfortunately you ever end up in this. And when they take your cell phones and they will take them, they will always go from the playbook is that, well, we take them because let's say you get into it with somebody and you show them that they're living in a shelter. Let's use some logic here. If I'm in the shelter with an individual, why would I take them? They will say that to you because many shelters have code violations and they fear that someone may record that and send it to some city councilman or the governor. That's what they fear. They say, well, this is for your protection. No, it is not. That is being disingenuous. This is not true. Again, it's about doing the basic requirements. So you can call on Lucifer. You can call on Michael. Santa Morte is good to work with. And also St. Jude. You can do a prayer and an offering to St. Jude. Because he works with those who are in the worst situations. To try and give them some relief. And Santa Morte, for those that don't know, Santa Morte is also a protectress of homeless people. So you could do that. And if you are in the shelter and you can't afford to buy books when you are on your time, download books. Download books because you want privacy there. So just download books. You can receive mail at the shelter, but I would recommend downloading the books and reading them when you can. So those are some tips. If you're homeless or going to be homeless, these are the things that you can do to survive. So with that, that is your meat and potato sorcery for the day. I am the Water Alchemist. Be water, my friends. Peace.